I think the honorable thing for our species to do is deny our programming. Stop reproducing. Walk hand in hand into extinction. One last midnight, brothers and sisters opting out of a raw deal. We do not trust any friends or family members. I repeat, do not trust what were you yeah, it's a lip? very it's a very bizarre it has like a zombie movie but it's like satirical slow paced like black comedy okay were you looking at a listicle about zombie movies yeah recently, i did or? yeah 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 that's pretty <laughs> much so... what happened here <laughs> so this cast bill murray adam driver tom waits chloe servini steve buscemi oh my danny goodness. glover anyway yeah. Like the Danny Glover? Our Danny Glover? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, 5.4 okay. out of 10. Everyone hated it. Okay, well. Oh, wow, that was dreadful, it says. Oh, boy. Boring and I, stupid. Uh, waste yeah, that's of money a, and talent. I love it. What, yeah, what would Chris say to that? He would say, like, that's our bat signal. That's, we <laughs> gotta go check that out. <laughs> 1 out of 10 is a, is, 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 you've got my attention. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking speaking of uh, yeah speaking of one out of ten and, and speaking of, about bad signals I read so this week uh, here's a hot review for uh, listeners if this gets included I read the newest uh, Tom King Batman one shot but it's like a Riddler story and so you know how um, Scott Snyder made the Riddler really competent you know like a worthy villain of the Batman you know we yes, were yes. really yeah Those so very what, cute. it was a cool delivery. Yeah. So what Tom King has done is like um, he's pretended that 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 version of the Riddler is just like uh, the Riddler with his hands tied behind his back. Like the Riddler is actually so much more terrifying and so much more powerful and so much more unstoppable because he's just like the superest genius ever. Um, And and it's just a whole (sighs) comic. Yeah. And that sounds okay, but it's just like it, it completely. It completely the the story goes out of its way to just like make make Batman like appear effectual and then suddenly become incredibly ineffectual so that so that he seems to be afraid of of killing the Riddler because the Riddler is like, yeah, I've been in your house and I've gone into your safe. And I sometimes I like to go into your house and I watch Damien sleep and shit like that. And you're like, what? Like this? That's stupid. That, that, that would never happen to Batman. Like and that's not a Batman story anymore. Like people don't scare the Batman. People don't get one over on the Batman they appear to, and then he makes a comeback, you know, and, and this movie, this, this comic, for whatever reason, seems to imply that, that Batman realizes that the only thing he can do to deal with the Riddler in this instance is to kill him. And so it like, what? It just like, yeah, it just kind of fails on all fronts. And you're like, no, no, like it's not a Batman story. Really? Yeah. Well, like it's a, like, it's a Batman story. Like, cause you can make a million different types of Batman stories, but it, it, you know, Batman, Fine, Batman can kill. I'm I'm willing to accept that, but he finds a way. You know, it's not. He, and I and the Riddler shouldn't be that powerful because, like, now what do you do with the Joker? What do you do with Mister Freeze? What do you do with like you when like is he he's more powerful than Rachel Ghoul? Like, yeah, that that kind of dis. Well, yeah, that sort of disassembles the the batting order. Mm-hmm. Like the hierarchy, like the yeah, yeah. The bad guys. It's like it's like what like Razal Ghoul's a, a dummy. The Joker yeah. is not not that dangerous. And then where's that put Batman in the hierarchy? In 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 fucking like like monkey mode, like five villains down the ladder. Yeah, yeah. Like just sort of fucking hanging on by his laurels. Like that. that yeah. That's not. That's not. That's not my Batman. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not my Batman either. Like, it, yeah, the only there's a couple good things I can say about the comic though. It's well structured and it looks fucking great. Like it's it's got great coloring. It's got great art. Um, oh, what's the guy's name? Mitch Gerard. Uh, and him and Tom King have have um, they've they've uh collaborated very frequently they're they're a really good team and uh here they're doing like it's it's you know it's that tom king pretending to be alan moore thing that he, that he does and he won't stop doing um and yeah it's just it's very retro very 80s but also very like tone deaf i don't i don't care for it at all i was really disappointed um and i, I guess that's my review so it's a riddler one bad day uh it's a one shot out from uh dc comics in your shops right now. Don't buy it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> stay, stay clear. Yeah. Uh, what you might want to do, though, you might want to check in on a little guy named Warren Ellis. We might want to go back in time. 
uh, see see what Warren was up to in the heady days of uh, Barack Obama. I guess 2008. Well, is, this, is this that when that was going on? Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't think it had anything to do with it. So we're, so it's Avatar August, ladies and gentlemen, on the Extinction Agenda with James and James. And we're doing a little tiny book uh, by Warren Ellis called Etheric Mechanics, a graphic novella um, with uh, pencils by Gianluca Pegliarani. Uh, and uh, I'll even shout out the inker on this, man. Uh, Chris Drearer? Drearer? Who knows, man? Um yeah, and uh, I wanted something short for us to little chat about, and I was Ellis's Ellis's work with Avatar at this time is very very interesting. He was creating a little uh, imprint for himself called Apparat. Uh, you can see it in the bottom left hand corner in the comic, and he was doing a bunch of comics under that imprint, and really just creating this whole universe of of avatar properties where uh, he could just, I guess it was all creator owned too. He was just fucking around. Like avatar was, was giving him free reign and, and some, a lot of stuff was coming out and this is one of it. One yeah, of this was, this was really neat. Um, I, it was uh, like, I don't know. you know, it was, it was Sherlock Holmes, right? Like, yes. Yeah. I yeah. Guess. For sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, Absolutely. Um, I'm just going back to think on it, but the, uh, like I, I just, just finished it right. Uh, like, like probably a few hours ago. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. And I just, I really dug the ending. Uh, <laughs> Sax Raker is not real. <laughs> <laughs> just fucking shoots this guy trying to, uh, um, he's basically trying to, I mean, I guess the whole thing is that he's trying to, uh, trying to erase the damage he's done. Cause he's like a time traveler that fucked up realities. I guess is the, I think so. Yeah. Like he's not even really a time traveler. He's like a scientist that got caught in, uh, some sort of scientific apparatus or, you know, um, like a slipstream. You know, he kind of, he went in between like, not even time, sorry, more, more like in between dimensions and sort of, yeah, yeah. Like the the thing is, um, Warren just gives it. He's basically he's taken these pulp conventions, the Invisible Man, Sherlock Holmes. Well, the Invisible Man, Sherlock Holmes, and I think that he's taken some elements from uh, 1984. I'm not sure where the Ruritania um, enemy of the the Britons is. Like what that's what's that's that is supposed to be, and what that is a reference to. Um. But anyway, he's just kind of mashed it all together and like gave it, gave it a, uh, I don't know, just, yeah, just gave it like this weird pseudo scientific explanation for how, how the universe came to be and, and, you know, what, what it all means. Cause it's like, it's 1907, but they have like flying technologies. Um, and Britain's been at war in space. So it's kind of like a Dan Dare thing, I guess. Uh, just like a lot of British conventions, a lot of pulp fictions all being mashed together. And, and you're not like there's not a lot of explanation as to why. And you and very quickly, you you find yourself not really caring. Uh, you're just like, oh, this is the universe here. OK, fine. Maybe there'll be an explanation. Maybe there won't be. But, yeah, this book, you know, gets to its yeah, credit. I think that's yeah. what I did was I, I, I started off at the start and I, I kept rereading mm-hmm. thinking there was this like like some sort of like grandiosity being like revealed in the, in the dialogue or something. Mm -hmm. And there there wasn't, it was just, he was just sort of like, like explaining to us where we were. And when we were getting, you know, we were meeting the captain, the doctor. Yeah. yeah. And he's kind of beat up and more torn and he's kind of, you know, you're just sort of supposed to accept like, okay, this is like a, like a weird, like uh, it's, it's like, like they have, they have technology like sort of, far beyond the time um but then they also don't yeah uh which is which is yeah it's just really neat it's it's a it, you know I, i'd like to see more of this flushed out <laughs> obviously but uh, yeah and, yeah and the artwork's outstanding oh outstanding. my goodness yeah the pencils i've seen like i've seen people's broken down pencils like like um like like you know great current artists like i i've seen jim lee you know i've seen i've seen everybody i've seen greg capolo you know and mm-hmm. and all like 
people's broken down pencil work. And that's basically what this is. It's just like ink. Um, and, and man, this kind of work in color is, is, is terrifyingly awesome. Who, who is that artist? So the guy, uh, Peg Liorani, I don't know. He's in, so here's what I've noticed is it's the same thing with, uh, crossed, um, plus 100, uh, the, the fellow's name who's escaping me. I think he was also maybe an Italian artist or a South American artist, but basically a lot of these, um, artists from other countries, you know, let's call them foreign artists. Cause this is an American, uh, product. They, um, I think it's an American product anyway, actually, you know what? That's funny. No, this, the guy who started this used to work for wizard magazine. So it's probably American. Um, the, yeah, they're just, you know, like you can get lower rates from foreign artists. Um, and you can, but then you can also get really good artists because you can get the attraction of like, look, you can work with Warren Ellis. You look, you can work with Alan Moore. And so it creates that sweet little spot where you can get like really good people who otherwise you, you wouldn't see, you know, putting aside Jason Burroughs, um, people who come in, do an excellent job and then kind of disappear from the scene. And, and this, you know, like, I don't know what else this guy's done other than he worked with Warren Ellis in a series called Ignition City at roughly just after this. Which I've never read to my, you know, but now I kind of really want to because if it looks like this, um, I forgot how good this looks. Uh, it's it's so dense, it's but it's so clear. No, there's nothing lost on the page. Um, it's yeah. I've hesitant. I'm hyper competent. Sounds like a backhanded compliment, but um, definitely a descriptor that applies here. Yeah, it's like it's he has like a complete like a complete range of depth for like for like the world, the backgrounds and and it's architectural and it's 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 everything there there's like a like a, like a I can see London for fuck's sake. Mm-hmm. It's a yeah. it's a it's a set of skills and and um and like attention to detail and like or like you said like architectural like competence that's like not usually found or and, and almost not needed um so you actually just don't see it very often i think yeah yeah and it's weird especially to see it in an avatar book you know and, and one of the things i'm starting to notice that we do routinely is like oh you know what i think we missed another really great artist in avatar um <laughs> <laughs> well yeah not it's not a, it's not a, it's not exactly the little league either right <laughs> yeah like, like you're working under warren ellis but it still kind of is because who bought this? You know, like I've, I've got a copy of it because I was I, you know, I was on the Warren Ellis newsletter and I, I was buying, you know, I was buying everything the guy was putting out mostly. Um, but if you weren't plugged into, you know, his his regular propaganda, you, you really didn't know. And why would you go looking for something like this? Like it's it's kind of a, it's kind of an un- on the face of it. It's a weird product because it's only 48 pages. It's a graphic novella. Um, it's, you know, it's just a thick pamphlet um and yeah at, i'm sad at i a, didn't buy it we were talking yeah about that. well yeah but you know at a price tag of seven bucks back then you were you know i can see a lot of people like go fuck yourself um and then it's all black and white that's that's gonna lower the market right there like is as good as this is and, and getting back to the guy's skills um he, it's not just the architectural competence like there's his characters act and everything matches the words and the art match. Like it's a really good harmony, like the proper comics, good pacing. Like it's all, I know, I know that like Warren controls the scripting um, and he's, he's a major component of that, but you know, lots of people have fucked up Warren Ellis comics in the past. So it's not as if he's bulletproof. That's true. Yeah. Really true. Yeah. Just see most of Stormwatch. <laughs> uh the majority of it, not the beginning and the end, though. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, sex um, is terrifying. And, and I like that. I like that version of Sherlock, too. Like, I, I like the Sherlock that's that's not really human. Like, and I and I like the idea that the that the Holmes analog is the. The sort of, um, you know, the grounding to to empathetic real life you know uh, uh oh, you mean I, I, oh you mean watson yeah oh sorry yeah yeah, yeah. I, I i like that telling 
um, mm -hmm. better. Like, I don't know why. I, I just, I like, I like the idea that he's, that he's, that he's dark and insane. Like, <laughs> well, it's a, oh, it's a Batman and Robin story. I mean, they're the original Batman and Robin, only it's a Robin that like, that tells Batman's story for us. Uh, and yeah, and, and the character of Sherlock is, is really intriguing. Like the idea of the, the detective, like the ultimate fucking detective. That's, that's so cool. Like just on the face of it. And, and I know Sherlock Holmes isn't the origin of that concept, but it's kind of the apex of that concept or at the very least the popular apex. Um, and I like that he's, um, sorry for the bus, everyone. The, <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> I was thinking, did you ever watch the Sherlock BBC series by um, the uh, Stephen Moffat's, you know, with uh, Benedict uh, Cumberbatch playing Sherlock? Did you ever watch that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so there was that, there, I think the second story in season one, there's a painting and, and someone's challenging him to figure out, like, the mystery. And he's just like, you know, something's happened to this painting and he can't figure it out. And the reason he can't figure it out is because he doesn't know anything about the constellations. And people are like, you know everything. Why don't you know about the constellations? He's just like, it doesn't affect me. I don't need to know about the stars. You know, like, that's not something that that I require knowledge about in order to do you know, like as as Sachs says in this, the scientific management of crime in all her guises. I didn't, you know, he doesn't need to know about the the constellations. And similarly, this this home, this Sachs, this Holmes, he's like, I don't need to know about the war. It has nothing whatsoever to do with what I'm doing here in London. It's superfluous knowledge. Um, and I, you know, I like that little bit, and I understand that that comes from the original. I've never read the original stories. Uh, I should, I should probably should at some point at least read a few of them, like he, Conan he, style. Yeah, and there's that little comment too where he goes, "Tell, tell me about your your war." Yes, exactly. You know, yeah, it's yeah. not not anything that really. It, yeah. Is, it, more like he'd like to hear a story about it than than he'd actually like look into it himself or needs to know anything about it. Yeah, yeah, and I, you know, I like that. I like that. It goes to what you were saying about him being sort of scary and inhuman and. Um, uh, it, yeah, and, and that's, that's what allows that sort of, um, incredible deductive quality that, that he has. Uh, and I love the dialogue in this, like this is, this is choice Ellis. Like I didn't, I didn't think of that when I selected this just cause I looked at my shelf and I was like, here's a, here's an avatar thing. Um, but I like I like the language of this. I like hearing everybody talk, like old London speak and stuff. I think he handles it extremely well. Um, and there's not a lot of that. I think what I like about it is that, like Warren's he's not doing that thing where he's trying to be funny all the time. Uh, he only has one major joke or maybe two. Uh, and they're they're quick and they're done with and they're kind of haha. But most of the time, like. It's just it's just the story. Everything's at the surface of the story. And I yeah, it's a strange pay, place for him to exercise that. It's true. And the, and the dialogue was smooth to read, mm -hmm. um, which which I'm actually f uh, finding because I, we, you know, uh, uh, running also we're we're currently doing Sandman and I, I found Neil's improving also. Right, right. Um, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, and this was this I, I and because that's something I notice when when I'm reading is like mm -hmm. if if I'm if I'm engaged and I'm reading the like the speech bubbles and 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 the dialogues flowing like I'm I I feel like I'm in the room people are talking to each other mm -hmm. and and yeah. I'm you know because you can you can write and fuck that up so bad and lose me really easy. Um, and I don't, I don't know if you experienced that. Um, I, oh, I know, you're, oh, I know sure. you typically read a lot, a lot more than me. So I'm sure you have like a higher tolerance for, for sort of like, <laughs> like sort of just processing, you know? I um, suppose so. Do I seem like someone with a high tolerance though? Um, you do, you have some, you do seem like someone, for, no, well, well, I mean for like a high, a high tolerance for processing data. Yeah. Um, yeah. That might be true. I, I, I don't like, I, I read purely for, for joy. Mm -hmm. and, and 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 i have my whole life so my tolerance is with fucking rock bottom low like <laughs> if you can't fucking if you can't write dialogue that i can read oof man like i i'm just like okay <laughs> yeah 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 no and that's one of like uh that's that is one of ellis's generally speaking his strengths 
it when is he's it's not, one of his charms. He's yeah, a smart when, writer that writes easy. Yeah, yeah. No, and that's it. I mean, and, and that's not nothing. I mean, like, it's just a shame he gets in his own way a lot of the time. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> not, in, not in this. Um, the, yeah. Um, a, a lot of the stuff he was doing at this time. So, so this, I didn't think about it until I, I was kind of putting the pieces together. Uh, preparing for this, but this this felt to me after having read it and after having thought about like where it was in Ellis's career, this feels like a, an offshoot idea from Planetary. Uh, it's you know like it, it's it's a planetary idea. Uh, there's even like okay, so it's that idea of multiple dimensions and maintained by supercomputers and pulp conventions and becoming aware of one's conventions within the universe and stuff like that. And he was doing a whole bunch of books like this at this time like uh, un- under the apparat and it, um collection or the apparat singles club aegis or whatever the fuck you want to call it uh it was just all stuff based on pulp conventions and i and i didn't make the connection that it was just it was just like leftover ideas from working on planetary and stuff that he didn't want to merge with superheroes i uh, i guess i guess that's what drove him in that instance and, and also to just to explore a, a particular small format. Um, he's, he's, he's often been an, an inventive, you know, um, sort of comics writer, like a, a guy who wants to fuck around with format and dimensions and, and stuff like that. Like, like with the material product of comics in a way that a lot of writers, like they don't bother. They're just given, okay, 22 pages. I'll show up. I'll do this thing. Um, and he, he kind of drives his own bus a little bit on that front. And I, I think that's another reason I've always sort of valued him. Yeah. And I, I, in this case too, I think that it's, I can't, I, I can't, I just, I'm still flipping through it and can't believe what this guy delivered over like the artist. Oh, I know. Right. <laughs> over that's 48 nuts. pages. But yeah. you, 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 you did your swan song on this. Fuck me. Yeah. Wow. I mean, man, I'd like to see something else. He's, I, I, I actually would actively like to see if this well, I've done another book or two. <laughs> well, I, I think I think maybe I guess we should read the first six issues of Ignition City. Um, and uh, he did some other stuff. I can't really. I didn't look very hard, but I could, didn't find anything for this guy past 2015. Like I think he he kind of crapped out. He probably started doing commercial work or found another job and just enjoyed. Cocaine. Maybe the cocaine. Maybe the cocaine. Ah, every time. Yeah, all the time. Just Goddamn Italians. Around. Not that again. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's a shame though. Like this guy could have been something. Like this is really good work. Um, yeah, old he is. Maybe he's just old as fucking balls. No, I think he this was, was all I he had he left was, in the tank. I think he was a reasonable age, but who knows? Oh. You know, life gets in the way of a lot of stuff. It's it's hard. Like for us, this is a big deal because we're like, oh, it's like in an Avatar book. But probably like five thousand people bought this book. At best, eight thousand. I don't know. Actually, let's let's be. Let's say 20. Let's even say 20. That's like, that's not a career. You can't do anything with that. And no one, this is never going to be popular as much as we enjoy it because we're, I hesitate to say we're connoisseurs at this point, but after, you know, 180 episodes of this shit, I think it's safe to say. Um, And yeah, anyway, it's a shame. Yeah, it's a real, real fucking shame, but yeah, and and I also like the I like the Ellis, uh, um, you know, the thing that he does, <laughs> which which is the the, the sh- you know the shock the kick ass moment. Oh, with like what at the end? Oh yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, where the he just dis- like you can see him processing this whole fucking thing. Just yeah. sweating buckets like this is awful. There's the shock. It, the shock happens when the guy says, uh, well, he's going on and on about the whole issue. But like the, there's shock on his face. Matter tells space uh, how to bend and space tells matter how to move. And he's had got shock on his face and he's processing like home, on the Holmes character, like our sex yeah. here is processing the whole time. But yeah. he lays out the whole thing. He's not a villain, and then I'm not real. He just won't. He just can't process this. And then I believe he's thinking to himself that that this guy's not smarter than him. Oh well, that's interesting. He definitely um, is. Yeah, go on. 
Yeah. And then he just puts him down, fucking yeah. decides, pull, just makes the decision and just grabs grabs his Watson's gun, shoots him in the fucking chest, puts him to sleep, and then goes, I'll solve those problems. <laughs> yeah. I'll solve the war. Whatever. Let's go ha ah, down the hallway. Very yeah. cool. I don't know. Yeah, well, I just like I love that like all the machineries behind him and he's holding the gun and he's like, "You were there after all, and I am quite real after all." And then yeah, yeah, he's just like, and it's it has a happy ending because like if anyone's going to solve the war, it's this this you know he's he's going to go into superhero mode mode at this point. Like it's kind of maybe I should take that back. Maybe it is maybe it's exactly a planetary story. It's just like it's the superhero origin of Sherlock Holmes. When when did Sherlock stop being that creepy guy who was only concerned about petty criminals and became a sort of Ozymandias um, and, <laughs> and sort of unleashed himself on on the world uh, as a sort of uh, goodwilled Morty, Moriarty, uh, all in the nature, all in the spirit of love. Um, yeah, it's really like it feels. It does feel rushed. However, <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it's still and then, cool. It's really cool because I feel like all the thinking sort of hits you at the end and then you, and you get to wonder like, oh, like, like, I, like, I wonder what Holmes would do with this, what Sachs would do with this information. Like, yeah, like n- now that he now that he knows there are there there are like layers or, you know, dimensions or, you mm-hmm. know. I anyway. fear that it would be like, uh, remember those episodes of the uh, Star Trek The Next Generation when. <laughs> They make Moriarty in the holodeck and, and like he becomes sentient for some fucking stupid reason and he creates this lever that allows him to control the Enterprise from the holodeck. I fear that it would be like that. Um but I, I trust what you mean awesome? Would, would, yeah. You mean <laughs> <laughs> that's what I, yeah, that's yeah, exactly, exactly what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> um uh, Yeah. Yeah, I I uh, so it, it kind of puts me in mind, like, uh, you know, I, I just want to focus a little bit on, on its rushed nature just for a second, not to harp on it too much. But I just it reminded me of something that um, Mark Millar said about his own writing. Um, he 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 said, he's like, no one criticizes you for a rushed beginning, but they'll always criticize you for a rushed ending. And so he when he's writing, he never worries about rushing the beginning. He'll he'll often like kind of blah, get right into it. But he never fucks up an ending like no, he never consciously or like that's his primary focus is just making sure that he sticks the fucking landing. Um, and I it really shows, you know, like he it it's it's all meticulously plotted and worked out. And I and I think Warren works too or definitely this time works too much and too fast and too sort of intuitively. I think he would probably disagree because uh, he's quite cerebral uh, about his work. Um, but, but still though, I, I think that, I think that Warren sometimes just can't, <laughs> he doesn't know what to do with himself and it's just like, yeah, it just kind of, well, you know, that, you know what though, for me, that, mm. that exact thing that you just described is mm-hmm. why you'll not tell me that Jonathan Hickman mm-hmm. is in the same class as, oh yeah, as, uh, oh, fuck. Mark Miller. He's just not. He he doesn't. He just like every one of his fucking ending. Every one of his endings is just a shit streak. Yeah. Like and I, and, and <laughs> yeah. I get the, I get that the guy's like a cash cow. Yeah. Um, and and I, and I mean I know he does all continuity. It, it, I was re. <laughs> I, one actually, there's a guy at work that's a big X Men fan. Um, oh okay. He was, he, he's at my at my new work, and he's he was saying actually that apparently Hickman. Hickman did all this like plotting and has mm-hmm. like a it, it, like a phase two or like sort of an end phase for this House of X and Powers of X and apparently mm-hmm. editorial just decided to drag that shit out like like as long as possible so they paused him and he mm-hmm. said well okay well let me know when you guys want to come back around and wrap it up that's not my understanding of the circumstance um, yeah I'm not sure I'm not sure where that came yeah. from. I just, no, no, no. That, there's, there's elements. Okay, so there's elements of truth as I understand it in what you just said. Um, he did have phase two and phase three, and all that shit worked out. But my understanding was it was a more cooperative situation where it wasn't editorial, but he talked to his fellow writers, and he was like, "Hey guys, like, okay, are we ready to move on to phase two? Because he, he was like, 
he wasn't in a rush for phase two. He was going to fuck around until it was time. Everybody was sort of tired and they had explored all this stuff and then they were going to do phase two. Um, this is what he says anyway. Right. And, and, uh, but everyone's like, no, we're actually pretty comfortable here and we like it. And he was like, okay, great. So what he did is he wrapped everything up in a four issue miniseries called Inferno, um, which I'll admit is not a wrap up at all. And then he, and then he walked off off the stage. Uh, very dissatisfying, you know, like I know COVID played into that and I think a lot of things played into it, but I don't think they, I don't think they muscled him out. I, I really don't like he, he's too, you're right. Cash cow. He's too much of a perfect corporate product <laughs> to, to really like, to really like push out, you know, he's such a team player. Even though he's he's a big weirdo, he's definitely a weird voice. He's well, a weird you know voice. what I mean. Like I'm, you know, that sounds like a. It makes a lot more sense to me too because I feel like were I whatever the piece of shit writer of Wolverine is right now, mm-hmm. if that was me, I don't, I don't know who you are. I'm sorry. It's Benjamin Percy. Fuck you, you suck Benjamin. Shit. Fuck. <laughs> you, nobody wants to read your shit, Benjamin. Roll mm-hmm. over. OK, mm-hmm. anyway, the, uh, <laughs> and, and, and I had this stuff all plotted. So people actually bought my books. Yeah, I'd want to stay fucking put. Yeah, yeah, that might be part of it. Um, um, got to be. It's got to be. Yeah, yeah. And you can say I, that I about think, every one of these clowns. X-Force. I think everybody just wasn't ready to go back <laughs> to the status quo, because like what's what's the what's the end point? It's always the status quo at the end point. Like, oh, when are we, when are they going to go? I mean, we're a far afield from fucking etheric mechanics here, but maybe yeah, we're yeah, not. Sorry. No, no, but that's fine. Maybe we're not because, like, at a certain point, like this book was all about. I'll try to tie these two things together. This book, like, uh, etheric mechanics was all about like um, re- returning things to the status quo and deciding that you're not going to. You know, you're going to make a better world, even though it's weird. Um, and right. Uh, you know, like Marvel Comics is not ever going to do that. Uh, they're all going to go back to the X Mansion and Professor X and to me, my X Men and all that bullshit. Like it's going to happen one day. It's got to like it, it can't not. I, no, I you, just you got to yeah. reboot. You got to yeah. reboot. Yeah, yeah. Nobody like, wants it, nobody wants anything interesting. <laughs> It might. It's going to take a little while. I mean, like Chris Claremont had 18 years of fucking around with X-Men before Jim Lee came around. Yeah, yeah so, that's true. So it's we'll, going to take a little bit. You know, every, every, yeah. hey, man, even the age of Apocalypse went on for years. Hell, oh hell Bone Claw Wolverine had a oh, long, God. long, <laughs> many issues. <laughs> Until he just mysteriously disappeared. <laughs> fucking stupid. Um, I'm just saying yeah. the you know. There's people yeah. that stick the landing, and there's people that don't. This story stuck the landing. Mark Miller sticks yeah. the landing. Yeah, and yeah. Some people just aren't gonna be that. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I'm glad you brought up Pikmin though, because like it's weird. Uh, you know, I like. We're fans. We, we, we create oh, yeah. lists. I, I make lists all the time. I can't help myself. Um, and I, you know, yeah, I wouldn't. I know, I know, we really adore the British writers. Uh, ah, or this, sorry, you know, I'm sorry, we do. Wow, well, we just, we just, we just do. And uh, and Hickman, but just Hickman just feels so fucking derivative of them, you know, like in in all respects. There's um, and yeah, it's a shame. But anyway, so anyway, blah. We read uh, Theoric Mechanics, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, yep. We we liked it. Um, I really. This liked is part. It, yeah. Yeah, this is part of our uh, Avatar August extravaganza. This is probably our last entry to Avatar August before we move on to Sandman. Uh, for oh, our man, that's sorry about that, Ben. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's fine. A nice little, uh, nice little treat for the folks. Man, you've been good to us. Yeah, and James uh, coming to us live from the uh, from the loudest place on earth, from the mean streets of Westland, Oregon. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that, folks. Um, <laughs> Yeah. I like I'm, it's from it's from 1907 London. It's all these motor vehicles bopping around. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. I think we just liked it. We don't need to rate it or do guilty or innocent or shit like that. It was it was good, man. Check honestly, ladies and gentlemen, like uh, any of the Apparat collection stuff. He did a book with Jason Burroughs. He did a book with uh, Carla Speed McNeil. He did a book with uh, Juan Jose Rip. And he did a book with uh, Laura McCubbin, whose name is conspicuously weird in that list. Um, 
and uh yeah it was all good it was it was a very good time warren was yeah doing some weird- well, i gra- i grabbed this one for four bucks on on kindle and i i i wouldn't i wouldn't take a refund if somebody offered it to me <laughs> there we go <laughs> <laughs> Now, all we need is a little energon and a lot of luck. 